Welcome to Electra Online. Here again, we're going to show you that Stokes theorem actually works. How does it work? Well, we can say that the left side must equal the right side. Here we have a vector function or vector field defined. They only have components in the y and the z direction. And we're going to show that the left side equals the right side by integrating over that surface. So on the left side, we have a surface integral. Over the right side, we have a line integral. And the line integral is going to go around the surface in a counterclockwise direction. When we use our right hand rule, that means that the dA will point towards the positive x direction, which means that dA will be defined as dy times dz, because the y changes, the z changes, x doesn't change, but it will be pointing in the x direction. You can see it on the left side, we first need to take the curl of our vector and then we have to multiply times the dA which is defined right here and then we have to integrate it over the surface which means a double integral so let's go ahead and do that I've already got us started this is what the curl looks like now we can work this out so we take the x unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to y of this which is going to be 4z squared minus the partial derivative with respect to z of this which is, in this case, 2x, minus the y unit vector times, in this case, we have the partial derivative. Um, did I do that right? Yes, this, this. So we have the partial derivative of this. This is 4z squared and partial derivative of z. Yes, okay, just want to make sure they make any mistakes. So next we have minus y unit vector times the partial derivative with respect to x of this quantity, which is going to be 0, minus the partial derivative of, uh, with respect to z of 0, which is going to be 0 as well. So it looks like the y component is not there. Now we have plus the z component times the partial derivative with respect to x of this, which is going to be 2z, minus the partial derivative with respect to y of 0, which is going to be 0. So it looks like the only thing that remains is that this is going to be equal to 4z squared minus 2x in the x direction, and then plus 2z in the z direction. So that is the curl of our vector. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it times dA. All right, let's do that right here. So this is going to be equal to, um, well, let's do it like this. So the curl multiplied times dA via the dot product is going to be equal to 4z squared minus 2x in the x direction plus 2z in the z direction and then we have the dot product with dA, dA is defined right here, which is dy, dz in the x direction. So notice that on the right side, we only have an x component. On the left side, we have an x and a z component. So the z component will drop out. We only have the x component left. So this is equal to the quantity 4z squared minus 2x times dy, dz. All right, so that will become the integrand of our integral right there. So now we can say that the surface integral of the curl of V dotted with dA is now going to be the double integral over, let's see, over y and z of 4z squared minus 2x times dy dz. All right. So it doesn't matter which order we integrate it in. So this is going to be equal to, let's put the dz over here, times the integral of 4z squared minus 2x times dy. And the limits of integration for dy, y changes from 0 to 1. All right, 0 to 1. OK, this is equal to the integral of dz times 4z squared times y minus 2x times y, evaluated from 0 to 1. Now, of course, I should also look at this and say, what is equal to a constant? Notice that x is constant along the surface, and x is always equal to 0. So we know that x is equal to 0 along the surface, which means that this will disappear, that this is the only term we have left. 
when we plug in 0 for y, we get nothing. When we plug in 1 for y, we get 4z squared. So this becomes equal to the integral of 4z squared dz integrated from 0 to 1. All right, now let's integrate that. So this becomes equal to 4z cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 1 which is equal to when you plug in the lower limit you get nothing when you plug in the upper limit you get four times one third or four thirds all right it looks like the left side of our integral of the equation that we have i should say the left side of that equation in stokes theorem is equal to four thirds now that means that the right side should equal to four thirds as well when we integrate along the edge here along the four paths that we have to take the all the way around we should also get four-thirds, showing that Stokes' theorem actually does work. Now, of course, we need some more board space. Let's do one more video, part two, to do the right side of this equation to show that the right side also equals four-thirds. And that is how it's done.